Jesus looked at your life and he didn't say, let me see if I can get a good deal. Let me see if I can negotiate and get a good bargain here. You know what? He said, it's worth so, you're worth so much to him. He's willing to pay the highest price to make sure you feel his value for you. That you are worth something to him. And if we're not careful, we'll go through enough life that we feel worthless. We feel invaluable. We feel like God doesn't care. Or we feel like other people don't care. And they may not. But I can tell you today, you have a redeemer who cares about you. That loves you enough that he would pay the highest price. He would give his very best to make sure you felt his love. And if, you're, if, if we're not aware of this, we'll find ourselves sitting at the table of insignificance. Let me tell you, don't sit at the table of in, insignificance. If you would like weekly content that builds your faith and helps you walk out all that God has for your life, subscribe and be a part of Life Family. We've been in a series called Not Your Table. We've been talking about the places we find ourselves sitting, the places we put ourselves in park that aren't God's best, that are not God's best for our life, places that God didn't want us to be, things we're doing that he did not intend for us to do. And so we've been joining Jesus, and Pastor Randy has taught so well over the last couple weekends, where Jesus turned over the table. We've been turning those tables over, saying, hey, this is not what belongs in our life, not belongs in, in our hearts. And so we've been addressing some of those things. And as we all do life long enough, we know that life just happens. Can I get an Amen. Sometimes things just come that just we didn't invite, we didn't want to have a part of our life. And what's crazy is that we, we sometimes take those things on. Those things begin to shape us that God didn't intend for us to take on. They begin to be things that we carry with us. The Bible says this, that it rains on the just and the unjust. That just because you have Jesus in your life doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen in your life. The difference is the hope that we have in Jesus, the life that Jesus gives us, the freedom that we have in him. Amen? And so we're going to talk about that over the next few moments, the next few minutes together, because there are some things that I want to stir in your heart today about who Jesus says you are, the life that you can be living, and how easy it is for some of the things that we, we go through to creep in on our hearts and creep in on our identity and, and how we see ourselves. Because the, there, as much as we have a savior, a redeemer who wants us to live the life of, that he died for, Jesus, that wants heaven's best in our heart, there is an enemy who wants to steal the joy, the peace, the, the worth in your heart, the, the, the confidence that you have. In fact, John 10, 10 says it like this, the thief, right? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said this, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That they may have, that you, that me, that we may have life that's overflowing, a rich and satisfying life. I love this translation of that verse. It says that we may have life abundantly. How many want the abundant life? Amen. And now listen, I want to tell you, that's not just nice cars and nice houses, which we love those too. We'll clap for that in a minute if you want. But really, he's talking about the, the self-confidence, the value, the self-worth, the security, the joy, the peace, the hope that brings us, that, be, that anchors our life in him. He's saying that the enemy wants to steal those things, but I've come that those things may be abundant in your life, that they would be, your life would be so full of God's goodness that it would overflow in every area of your life. But we have to be aware. We have to know that there's just as much as Jesus wants us to have those things, there's an enemy lurking in the shadows of our lives, looking for opportunities to steal that stuff from our heart. Has anybody ever had anything stolen from you before? Yeah. I have. We're in good company, I see. All right. I remember years ago, my very first time that this really was just a, uh, a life-shaking moment for me. I was an intern uh, for a ministry many years ago. Uh, there's nothing like paying someone to go work for them. That's what I did for a year. And I, I went to this internship, and, and I had a roommate from another state, and we, were, uh, we lived in this uh, condo together. 
And one day, one holiday, Thanksgiving holiday, we went home for about four days and we came back. And as we were coming back to our condo, it was a, uh, there was a back entrance to it. And so I was driving around, thought it'd be better to get to the back door so we could unload our things easier. And as we're pulling up to the door, I look up and all this happens within the matter of like seven seconds. Hey, did you leave the door open? He starts defending himself. And I'm thinking, now, why is that wood splintered like that? Who would have broken our door? I think we just got robbed. All that happened within seven seconds. And I hit him. I said, bro, I think somebody broke in our house. And so we jump out of the car and we run over to the door. I don't advise this, okay? But this is what I did at the age of 20. I opened that door. I said, hello? (laughs) Anybody here? (laughs) Now, if they would have answered yes, this would have been a totally different story, I'm sure. But thankfully, nobody answered, and so we naively went in and started looking around like, oh my goodness, and you could tell that they had had their their way in in our house, that they had taken their time, and they had methodically gone through every room, and they had taken things. So we call the police and they come to a, a report and, and after the police officer leaves, that just the weird feeling of shutting that door and knowing that someone had been in your house, it was just odd. Laying down that night and just thinking like, did they sit on my bed? Like I washed every sheet, I washed everything, man. I was just spraying like sanitizer, you know, Lysol back in the day, it was Lysol everywhere. I just, that, that odd feeling of knowing someone had taken advantage of us while we were gone, our lives. And it wasn't that night, I'm, honestly, we were going through the house and we're like, well, man, that was, why'd they take that? Why, why, they should have taken this. That was, and I remember this moment, I was like, man, they just took all the things we really liked. In fact, it was my, this will date the story a little bit. It was my DVD and VHS combo. (laughs) Come on, they had just come out with that. Like we're going high tech in this house. We're bachelor pad. We could play VHS and DVD. Yeah, Blu-ray did not exist, by the way. And I remember laying there in the bed and just thinking, wow, they, they took all these things. And then over the next few days, there would be moments where I realized I needed something. And I thought, where is that? And I'd go to look for where it was before, and it was gone. I didn't realize it was missing until I needed it. There were things in my closet that they had taken. There were clo- they took clothes. I'm like, what? How can you take my polo, man? Come on. <laughs> and I, I remember, you know, in life, it's been, there's been several moments like that for me, spiritually speaking. Maybe you have had a morning where you've woke up and you thought, Where's my confidence? Where's my, where's my value? Where, where, where do I, where's my security gone? Where's my peace? Where's my joy? It's because the enemy has, used, has probably stolen it, has used a situation, a circumstance, a relationship to put, to put you in a place where you've taken on something that's not God's best for your life. What happens is, is when the enemy robs that, we start We start looking at ourselves different. We start thinking of ourselves different. But we're here today to recalibrate our hearts. We're going to recalibrate our minds, and we're going to talk about the the love and the grace that God has for your life and why he has that for you. Anybody ready for it? Ephesians chapter 1. Let's start here, and let's dive into this. Ephesians chapter 1, starting with verse 4, says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption, to be a part of his family, to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to praise, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one, capital O, that's Jesus, he loves. So through Jesus, so in him, in Jesus, when we are in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, we have forgiveness of our sins in accordance with his, with the riches of his grace that he lavished, lavished on us. How many are thankful that God will lavish something on us? Amen. His goodness. If we're not careful, we'll miss, we'll live a life that Jesus gave us. We'll, we'll not live the life that he gave us. We'll live a life that the enemy has given us. And so today I want to talk to you just three short principles about what this verse means for you. If you are in Christ, if you are in Jesus, if you have received him, I'll be very clear, this is what comes, it's a package deal. And when you accept Jesus into your heart, this is what happens. First is the redemption. You are 
valuable. You are valuable. Let me make sure you hear that clear today. Some of you may not have heard that in a long time. You are worth something. He said that he redeemed you. Redemption is actually a transactional, almost you could say this, an accounting term, if you will. In, its original, in the original writing, it really, the, the Greek word meant paid in full. And so the word redemption means there was an exchange. There was something given for another thing, given for another thing. And so what Jesus is saying, what, what the scripture is saying is that Jesus gave his life for you. And the good thing is he didn't just give a little bit. He gave all that he had. He gave the very best so that you could experience heaven's best. I love this scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 20. It says that for God bought you with a high price. He paid the highest price he could for you. That ought to make you feel valuable. In fact, I come from a family. This, this is why it means a lot to me. I come from a family where we just want a good deal. We are bargain hunters. My dad will go to Target, Walmart. He'll, he'll negotiate in the aisle. He'll pull up some of his stock in the shelf and say, hey, can you give it? This says $20. Can I get it for $15? I'm like, dad, it's Target. You never know, son. And guess what? It's worked before. I'm like, how did you get that? How did you do that? Let alone trying to, let alone trying to buy a car or a house. My wife, and, my wife and I are actually trying to buy a van right now. Uh, a minivan. Yeah, we are that family now. That is us. We're trying to buy a minivan. And uh, we, we've been looking at cars and we've been looking at the value of these cars. And we, you, know, you look online, Kelly Blue Book, and then you look, you search the lots and the online stuff. It's just crazy. And, and it's so wild to see how, it all, how the prices have changed so much. And, and so this is what it was like. This is what it was like for your life. It's like Jesus looked, it's, it's me looking at that van and saying, okay, you want $40,000 for that van? I love that van so much, I'm going to give you 55000 Exactly. There were laughs in the crowd, right? That's how silly that really is. Jesus looked at your life, and he didn't say, let me see if I can get a good deal. Let me see if I can negotiate and get a good bargain here. You know what? He said, it's worth so, you're worth so much to him. He's willing to pay the highest price to make sure you feel his value for you that you are worth something to him. And if we're not careful, we'll go through enough life that we feel worthless. We feel invaluable. We feel like God doesn't care or we feel like other people don't care and they may not. But I can tell you today, you have a redeemer who cares about you, that loves you enough that he would pay the highest price. He would give his very best to make sure you felt his love. And if, you're, if, if we're not aware of this, we'll find ourselves sitting at the table of insignificance. Let me tell you, don't sit at the table of in, insignificance. When you find yourself there feeling, in, feeling a lack of value and worthless, you need to know you have a redeemer. You have a God who loves you enough to pay the highest price. He didn't look for what the least he could do. He thought, what's the best I can do? What's the most I can give? And he did that for you and for me. 1 Peter 1, 18 says this, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold you were redeemed from the empty way of life. In other words, he says, the, I didn't give some, the, again, wasn't the least I could give. Just like, hey, listen, he paves his streets with gold if you don't know that. He says heaven, the, the roads in heaven are paved with gold. It, like that's, that's, what he, that's what he drives his pickup on. We're in Texas, I got to, trying to keep it real here. But he said, I didn't, I didn't redeem you. I didn't buy you back with that from the empty way of life that others could give you that were passed down from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He said, I didn't look for the way, the cheapest way to get you. I wanted to give my very best. And if you don't believe that about yourself, about your life, you're probably not going to believe God for his best in your life. Let me say it like this. It's difficult to believe for God's best in your life when you don't believe God's best about your life. You've got to believe that you were worth his sacrifice, that he loved you enough to go through that for you, for you. 
You are valuable. Come on, somebody say that with me. Say, I am valuable. Now say it like you believe it. I am valuable. Come on. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm worth something. Oh, yeah. See, so you, somebody's been wanting... You've been wanting to tell your husband that for a long time. Long time. You are worth something. This is another, there's another, here's another thing about who you are right here is you are free. You are free. The enemy wants to take that from you. He wants to make you feel that you are bound to the sin in your life. That you're bound to the consequences of your past. That there is no freedom in your life. That you have to live... You have to live beneath those things. Here's what Romans 3.23 says. Everyone has sinned. We've all fallen short of God's glorious standard. It's, it's, this isn't just, just singling anybody out. This is all of us. We've all fallen short of this. But the good news is today, 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, Christ made us right with God. It's through Jesus that we are made right. He has, excuse me, he made us pure and holy and freed us from sin. You are free. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are free. You have the ability to not live underneath the weight of your past, your decisions, your actions, former relationships, former job problems. You can be set free from those things in your heart and in your life. I remember this phrase one time, a mentor, an elder mentor in my life had been ministry for many years. And I was young when he told me this, I was walking through something. I was talking to him and he said this phrase to me right here. Do not live under the circumstances. And he said, let me tell you a story, son. And he told a story about an encountering a lady he had not seen in many years. He was in a church service, had just finished preaching, came off the platform. And the lady came up to him and said, oh, pastor so-and-so, it's so good to see you. He said, well, you too, dear. He said, it's been many years, but it's great to see you. How are you and your family doing? And this was her response. Well, she took a deep breath and she said, pretty good under the circumstances. And he said, I paused and I looked back at her and I said, what in the world are you doing under there? <laughs> and so he looked at me, he said, Brian, what in the world are you doing under there? What are you doing under those circumstances? That's not who you are. That's not who you're supposed to be. That's not what the life that Jesus has for you. That's not the purpose God's called you to do. You've got to get yourself out from abundance. You're called to walk on top of those. You're called to, to be in a place where, of faith where Jesus is leading you and guiding you. You're free from that. Come on, don't live under the circumstances. And if we aren't conscious and intentional about that, we'll take on the burden of what, of the past. And we'll take on the burden of, of the things uh, that we've done and that we're not proud of and the shame and the guilt. And, and we'll start carrying that. Listen, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's where Jesus lives. And if you are not living there, then you need to get out from, a, you need to kick that table over. Because who the sun sets free is truly free. You've got, to, you've got to remember you're in Christ Jesus, that he has set you free from those things. You don't have to live connected to, bound to, chained to those things. If you found your, yourself dealing with those things, you may be sitting at the table of your past. Let me just say it like this. Don't sit at the table of your past. Jesus has kicked that table over. We're turning that thing over today that you don't have to, you don't have to sit there and, and uh, live in that environment, in your heart, in your emotions, in your home. Jesus has set you free. Can I get an amen? amen. His life, his life was paid in, for you, was given for you to be set free from those things. Not just so you can just deal with those every day, but to set you free. He wants to make you new. I love this scripture. It's been a life scripture for many years. And it says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone. Say, the old is gone. gone. A new life has begun. When you step into Christ, when you step into Jesus, you take on this new life we're talking about. You take on this new identity of who you are, who he says you are. And if we forget whose we are, And if we forget who we are, the enemy is beginning to destroy your purpose and your worth. He's beginning to kill the dreams and the passions that God's put in your heart. He's beginning to steal the security and value you have 
through Jesus. Don't forget who you are and whose you are because when Jesus gets finished with you, you won't even recognize yourself. You're gonna be a new you. Come on, somebody say, I am free. I am free. You are free. You are valuable and you are free. Lastly, let me, let me say this. What, this. what Ephesians 1 verse 7 says to us, verse 7 and 8, actually verse 8, he actually says this. You are covered. Hey, you are covered. Here's what he says. He lavished his grace on us. He has covered you with his grace. What does that mean for me? What, what, what do you mean? It means this, that when you feel like you're not enough, his grace is. When you feel weak and you can't do it on your own, it's okay. There's grace for that. Several years ago, I was in a car accident, head-on collision, and uh, really a sad story, really sad, everybody. Oh, no, just kidding. It was a car accident, went to the hospital, had some work done on my uh, hip, and it was, they, they screwed it all back together, and I had to go through uh, months of therapy and learn to walk, get my stride back and all this, and they said, listen, you can't do anything that's, in, in, that's impactful on your joint, your hip. And I said, the best thing for you to do is, get a, is to swim or ride a bike. And so I looked at our budget, can't buy a swimming pool. I'm getting a bike, all right? I'm getting a stationary bike, I'm getting a stationary bike. And we bought one, we put it in our home. And I would, every day I'd get on this bike and I'd start just gradually getting, getting the motion going and start working on my hips, strengthening these joints and these muscles. And I'd been in the bed for like three months uh, recovering. And it was just like, it was just the weirdest thing. And one day I'd got going really good. I just started and I just, all of a sudden I heard a loud pop, pop. First thing I thought, did I throw something out? No, something had broken inside that stationary bike. And I got off of that bike and I was like, oh man, what am I gonna do? And, and I went to my little toolbox and I got my screwdriver out. I started taking stuff off and I actually walked through the, through the uh, room I was in and she looked at me and she could see it all over my face. She said, what, what is wrong? What, what's going on? I was like, it broke and I don't know how to fix it. I just, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't, I, it's frustrating now. I'm, I thought I should be doing my workout. And, my, and she just came over. She said, baby, baby, settle down. It's okay. It's okay. She said, we got the warranty. <laughs> Angels from heaven began to sing hallelujah over my home. In fact, they're still singing that same sweet song. And just this load lifted off to me. Literally, in that lifted off me, in that moment, I just went, Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I'm trying to figure this out. I'm, tr I'm worried about this and it's covered under the warranty. I don't have somebody, and man, I called so quick, that little 800 number on the bottom, that little silver sticker they put on everything. Right. I called, I said, yeah, yeah, this is Brian Larson. I got a warranty. <laughs> yeah, it's broke. I'm covered though, I'm covered. Little dramatic, but pretty much the same scenario. I was so excited that I didn't have to do it on my own, that, that I wasn't the one that had to fix it, that I was covered under warranty. Let me tell you that there are moments in your life, some of you may be in one now, some of you may just come out of one, you could have one next week, where you're gonna feel like you just can't do it. You're gonna feel the brokenness, you're gonna feel uh, the insignificant feeling, and you're gonna say, oh, okay, okay, great, great. I don't have to feel this because I'm covered by his grace. Oh, I shouldn't have done that today. Oh, oh, God, forgive me. Thank you, God, forgive me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm gonna go make it right. Thank you, God, for your grace. 2 Corinthians 12, for my grace is all you need. My power, his power, God's power works best in your weakness. It's okay. It's okay to have a moment of weakness. You're covered. It's okay when you don't know how to figure it out. You're covered. He's already bought the warranty for you. He's already paid the price. All you have to do is, it, is accept it. Don't take on the pressure of being perfect. You don't have to have it all together all the time. You're not expected to be perfect. You're not expected to know and understand every single thing. That's why he's God. 
That's why we put our trust in him, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in God with all of your heart. Don't lean on, don't depend on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. Look to him, resource him, call the 800 number. God, I don't know how to figure this out. And let him lavish his grace on you. Let him be more than enough for you. Let him be sufficient for where you find yourself in that moment. Don't sit at the table of insecurity. When you try to be perfect, you're never gonna match, you're never gonna measure up to that, to perfection. And you're gonna be insecure, you're gonna feel like, I'm, I'm never enough, I'm never, and I'm telling you, it's okay to feel that, but you can't sit at that table. We've all felt those feelings, we've all battled those things. I'm telling you today, he has kicked that table over and he's saying, I'm here to cover you. I'm the one who qualifies you. I'm the one who makes you enough. I brought you into this season. I'm gonna carry you through this season. Amen. Second Corinthians 3, 5. We are confident of all this because of our great trust, our trust family, our great trust in God through Christ. It is not that we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. Let me hear you say this one more time. I am covered. You are covered, family. You're covered. God's got you. He sees you right where you are. He hasn't left you. He hasn't abandoned you. He's using this season to remind you of how great he really wants to be in your life. How good and how faithful he really is to your dreams and to your passions, to your heart, to your family. Don't live underneath the circumstances. Don't find yourself there sitting at a table that he didn't design for you. Don't find yourself shrinking back. This is the moment where you need to lean in and allow God to be God in your life. What great confidence it gives me. What great confidence it should give you that you're so valuable. Your, your value is so great that he would pay the highest price for you. That he loved you so much that he would give you a life free from sin and the consequence thereof. That he would make a way for you knowing that we wouldn't be enough for every situation, for every circumstance. That his grace would cover us, would be sufficient for you and me. That's good news. That's God's grace. That's redemption in our heart. Hey, thank you for being a part of service today. We hope that God's word met you right where you are. We hope you took something that's gonna help you move forward in God's best for your life. We wanna hear from you. There's a link right below this video you can click on. Send us a note, let us know what's going on in your world, where you're watching from, maybe even how we can be praying for you. We love believing God with you for God's best in your life. You can do that by clicking that link, sending us a short note. Hey, maybe also you've made a decision to follow Jesus recently. That excites us. We celebrate with you. We want to hear from you. We want to know what God is doing in your life. You can text the word follow to 22999. We'll respond back with a link that you can click on. Go to our website. We have some great next steps for you. How to move forward in that decision that you're, you've made to follow Jesus. Jesus, whether it's water baptism, whether it's getting in a life group, or maybe even planning in God's house right here with us in Life Track. We know whatever that next step is, God has great plans for your life, and we want to be a part of seeing all of God's best fulfilled in your heart and in your life. We hope you're doing awesome. We can't wait to see you next time. If you don't have a home church, we would love to invite you to be part of Life Family. Remember, you belong here. Join us again next Sunday or any time throughout the week. Hit that bell so you never miss when we post a new video. Hope to see you again soon.